Welcome to Practical PID Tuning Part 3. In this series, I show you how to take a copter from stock Betaflight 261 default PIDs all the way through to the final tune without using any black box, just using your eyes, your ears, and your FPV camera. If you haven't watched Parts 1 and 2, go ahead, stop now, go back and watch them because PID tuning is a process, and if you don't know where we are in the process, it's easy to get lost. D-gains are back down and P has been reduced on, I think, pitch. So we'll see if the oscillations are still there and that'll tell us the roll axis is oscillating. Yep, roll axis at least is oscillating. So we still had the oscillations and so now we're gonna take the roll axis down to 5.8. We know that at 6.5, that's too high. We have oscillations. We know that somewhere around 5.8 or 6, the oscillations are reasonable. So now the roll axis will come down. We know the roll axis was oscillating. Let's take the pitch axis up to 6.5 and see if it oscillates. And you know, I feel pretty confident that it does. So let's, I mean, because it's an X-frame, it's a it's centralized axis. I'm pretty sure that it's going to oscillate on this axis too. So let's save some time. Let's assume that the pitch axis is also oscillating. We know the roll axis is oscillating. Let's try and find the sweet spot for pitch. Let's take pitch down to like 6.2 and see how we're doing there. Meanwhile, roll has been taken down to 5.8 where we're confident that it will not oscillate because we tested it out at 6.0 and we saw just the hint of oscillation. So if we get, os get p-term oscillations this time, it must be the pitch axis. That's what we'll know. Well, I did have oscillations right up until the moment I crashed. So, still too high, and we're going to need to reduce pitch P. Alrighty, so we know this is too high. I remember that at 6.0, I barely got any oscillation. So let's take them both down to 5.8. And maybe we'll see. The oscillation should basically be gone. I already flew it with them both at 6.0. And it was just the tiniest bit of oscillation. So it seems like that's kind of the sweet spot. Somewhere between about 5.8 and maybe 6.1. Uh, I feel like I'm probably not going to spend a lot more effort trying to dial that in that there's not a huge amount of difference there. Maybe a little bit less oscillation or a little bit sharper response, but I flew it at 6.0. There was just the tiniest bit of oscillation on very sharp turns. Maybe drop it down to 5.9 if you want to get rid of that. Well, what if it's 6.0 on roll and 5.9 on pitch? Really? Really? Like, we're pretty close. So let's take it to 5.9. That'll maybe give us just a tiny bit less oscillation. And then let's, I'm not going to fly it like that because I already flew it with six with both of them on 6.0 and I know where that was at. So then let's just see if we bump these up to 22, what that does. And just to clarify, in case it's not obvious, the thinking here is that now that I've got the P gains dialed in pretty close to optimal, I can now start working on my D gains. There is a little bit of interaction between the P and the D gains. Sometimes if you raise D a little bit, you can raise P a little bit as well, and everything stays good and maybe sharpens up a little. But I don't want to start tweaking D too much until I'm sure that my P gains are pretty close to correct, and now I am. Let's give her a fly. I've also reduced the camera angle just a smidge. I crashed the last time was because I was not used to the amount of camera angle on this thing and uh, misjudged my <laughs> thrust angle relative to the ground. Oops. Let's not do that again. Well, here's a little quiz for you. There was oscillation there. Did it sound like P-term trilling or D-term warbling? Go back and listen again if you want. And once you've locked in your answer, keep watching. Let's get some prop wash there. Yeah, some... Yeah, no. 
Yeah, that, I don't think that was there before. I'm gonna take the D back down. Let's give it some, just some flying now though and see how it feels. I want you to notice how the D-term oscillation, and it was D-term oscillation, came out just at the end of that last punch. It's smooth, and then all of a sudden, at the very end, the D-term oscillation comes out. Listen. Right there, you can kind of hear the warble come out. That's the D-gain being just on the edge of too high. Or maybe just right, depending on how you like it. But I feel like it's too high. I can hear the oscillation. That's D-term oscillation for sure. I don't, it just sounds like it. It's not P-term oscillation. D-gain is too high. You can just hear it. Well, that was interesting. My intent here was to tick to the left and talk back center, but uh, the copter became destabilized um, and when a motor basically stopped making thrust is the most likely explanation. You can watch it happen here in slow motion. Get ready. I didn't hear a screech. So we're going to assume that min throttle is too low. If I'd heard a screech, I would say it was a desync or a uh, demag situation. Since I didn't hear any screech, we're going to say that min throttle is too low and we need to raise it. So let's see where my min throttle is. Yeah, 1025. They're spinning at about 1005 to 1015, I think. I don't remember, but let's take that up to 1030. And let's take the PID tuning and bring our D down. It was at 18. Let's take it down to, let's say 15. Okay, so see how smooth it is now? Really no prop wash is there. Still P-term oscillation on high throttle. At the highest throttle, there's still P-term oscillation. The prop wash is looking pretty good. See, no oscillation there. Little oscillation there. Hmm. Pretty good. Let's try those little tuck turns and see. Okay, no destabilization there. A little bit of rebound on the uh, on the twitch move there. A little bit of rebound. 
I really bang the stick with a little bit of rebound. I don't think that's something I'm going to try and tune out, though. Yeah. Oh, damn. That is something. Damn. That is something. Oh, man. I think we're pretty close here. Still got a little oscillation. I don't think I'm going to reduce the... Um, I don't think I'm going to reduce the P game, though. I don't think I want it any softer than it is, and I might want it a little sharper. Oh man, you see that voltage sag? Ah, that was crazy. At this point, I would say that we are, I'd say 90% tuned. I think we're well past 85% tuned. We're at least 90% tuned, maybe 95%, somewhere in that range. The copter flies essentially, well, perfectly is a strong word, but except for the edge cases that are always the last things to tune out. So the prop wash oscillation, now, the prop wash oscillation, we may not be able to get rid of with these ESCs in this motor. Uh, there's a certain amount of prop wash oscillation that you can get rid of and deal with. Uh, you could definitely make it worse, but at a certain point, you just can't make it better without better ESCs, really. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. We have a little bit of oscillation at the top end of the throttle. I feel like I don't want to reduce the P gains anymore because I don't want the copter to fly any softer than it already is. In fact, I might like it to be a little sharper than it is, just a little. So it's possible that the right thing to do is to use TPA. Um, we also have that sharp rebound at the end of the half snap roll. And that a sharp rebound like that might be indicative of, could it be excess D gain? I mean, excess P gain? You usually get ringing with excess P gain, but but maybe. It's not low P gain, that's for sure. So you could certainly raise D. The, the, the classic thing to do in a situation where you have that sharp rebound at the end of the, uh, the half snap roll is to raise D. But I don't feel, we know we're going to get oscillation if we raise D much more. So maybe the, I think I'm more and more thinking the thing to do is to use TPA. If you think about it, if we add some TPA, then at high throttle, D will be reduced and P will be reduced and the oscillations will smooth out. Meanwhile, at low throttle, such as when you're doing a half snap roll, D will be at its maximum and will do the best job of taming that, uh, that sharp bounce at the end. So yeah, I think that's the thing to do. I'm going to put P up just another notch because I feel like I'd like the copter to fly just a smidge sharper. I'm going to put D back to 18 and I'm going to add some TPA. Let's just leave the TPA breakpoint at 1500 because why not? We'll just leave it where it is. And let's add, let's say we add 15% TPA just to knock the edge off of the high throttle oscillations and we'll give that a fly. So I'm going to end the series at this point because once you've got the copter to this point in the tuning, in my opinion, everything at this point, you kind of are just making little tiny changes that are a matter of personal preference and really feeling it out. It's very tedious, <laughs> to put it at the least. 
Um, so I'm not going to put you all through that. I'm sure some of you would love to see it. The problem is that it's not a very, I don't feel like it's a very methodical process that I could explain in a way that made sense. It would just be me going, hmm, what if I did this? No, I don't like that. Hmm, what if I did that? Hmm, no, I don't like that. So just little changes. I'm not going to change anything significantly from where you see here, though. P might be as low as 5.8 or as high as maybe 6.1 maybe 6.2 if TPA really brings down the top end oscillation a lot. I, I probably will leave I alone. It feels all right. Maybe I'll bring I up a little bit. It might be as low as 40. It might be as high as 50, okay? D, D is the one I feel the least confident about. D, it feels like we definitely got those oscillations at 22, but with TPA, perhaps that will go away. And raising D may help with that sharp rebound at the end of the half snap roll. So maybe what I should be doing is focusing on getting D up to maybe 22 or 25 to try and get rid of that sharp rebound on the end of the half snap roll. And then using TPA to t tune out the top end oscillations. That's an option that I'm going to explore. I as a pilot and an acro pilot don't do a lot of the really sharp, like half snap, half snap rolls or half flips. I don't do a ton of those. Maybe if I was the kind of pilot who did more of those, I would care a lot more about getting rid of that. Okay, so we're going to call this one done, and I hope it's been helpful. I know that there's a little more tuning to do, and some of you would like to see that, but for the time being, I feel like if you could get your copter to this point, then you're probably going to be pretty happy, and we didn't touch black box once. The other thing I think is important to acknowledge is it may this tune, did it seem like it went really pretty easy, right? Maybe it's maybe I'm just that good that I made it look easy. Now, <laughs> uh, the reason it looks easy is because I've got a great frame. I've got a light copter. I've got fantastic ESCs, little B20s. They're not the top of the line ESC anymore, but they used to be. They're great ESCs. They're good motors, good props. Everything about this copter, the gear, it doesn't have to be expensive gear, but it has to be the right gear and it has to be good gear. I see a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to tune around mechanical problems that their copter is having. Their ESCs have bad braking, their ESCs don't spin up aggressively, They're, they have a motor that's overpropped or a 750 gram copter and it isn't handling right. Obviously, you know, you fly what you got, right? And And everybody has the gear that they have and they have the amount of money they have to spend on new gear and not everybody is going to buy a $600 copter and fly it and you don't have to. But if it seems like this tune went really easily and really smoothly, that's because I had no mechanical issues to fight with. And so it's cheating a little bit, but th that's troubleshooting, not tuning in a way. And I do a lot of troubleshooting on the black box log analysis. I would say if you have quality gear, especially good ESCs and your copter is not excessively heavy, tuning should be about this easy. And, and when I tune a copter, and again, not to brag, but this is pretty typical of how long it takes me to tune a copter. I probably spent a few hours, a couple hours getting it to this point, uh, probably less, maybe less than an hour if I hadn't been shooting videos in the process. So, so if it's taken you a lot longer than this, and it doesn't seem like it's going this easily, if you're following this procedure, I think you should be able to get to this point pretty quickly in a few hours of flight time, I would say. And if you're following this procedure and things don't seem to be going, like there's an oscillation that you just cannot get rid of, it may be that there's something wrong with the copter. It's not that you're tuning it badly. So something to keep in mind. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that. Thank you for watching. As always, happy flying.